Hello, good afternoon. My name is Debbie Jacobs, and I wanted to do a video about uh, being awake, uh, healing, uh, mental illness, uh, you know, um, and what I see. Uh, well, basically, let me tell you something that I lived in mental illness most of my adult life. I lived with depression, anxiety, and bipolar. Um, and let me tell you something, mental therapy never did it for me, never helped me. You know, I kind of look at it as like stirring peas, you know, on a plate, like, you know, stirring your food around. It's like, you're just stirring your food around. You know, uh, you know, what I didn't know is that I needed to like, you know, get rid of the food, get rid of the plate, get up and go do something, not sit there and just stir my food around, you know? And that's what I felt like, you know, therapy is for over 10 years. I was in therapy, no results, got none, nothing, zero zilch, you know? And let me tell you something. I kind of realized this because now I started focusing on my healing and I got the most amazing results now let me tell you something it took me five years of determination and commitment to really take myself on how was I getting in my own way how was I creating my own unhappiness you know and the process of healing is really changing all of our negative ineffective coping skills and let me tell you something there's tons 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 of negativity embedded in our behaviors you know our go-to's my go-to was anger how does anger serve me anger makes things worse negativity makes things worse and it also took uh, changing my negative thinking also because my negative thinking and my negative in ineffective coping skills go hand in hand you know when I had negative thoughts in my mind you know uh, creating anger I'm gonna act on it and I have anger, you know, and now I'm, I'm acting in anger because of my negative thoughts. Anger doesn't come from positive thoughts. And let me tell you something, that, that negative ineffective coping skills and negative uh, ineffective thinking create low self-esteem. They go together. It's like a little set, you know? Uh, so basically, my, my healing was to get rid of all this negativity and low self-esteem. How the hell can people accomplish happy lives if they're living with all this negativity and low self-esteem? So healing is unlearning what was learned. That's learned. All that stuff is learned behaviors. We learned, modeled, you know, uh, reactionary, you know. Um, and then I focused on learning effective ways of handling the situation. I don't have to get angry, you know, because I don't get my way. Or I don't have to get angry because somebody, you know, calls me a jerk. I don't have to take it personal. I could say, okay, that's your opinion. And guess what? I don't want to fight about it. And I don't care about it. It doesn't invalidate me. I validate myself, you know. Uh, and basically, you know, through the process of healing, I changed all of my negative, ineffective thinking to positive, effective thinking. And I changed my um, negative, ineffective uh coping skills to positive effective coping skills and with the combination of that I accomplished healthy self-esteem the awakening of my beautiful authentic self that is the spiritual awakening and the spiritual awakening is the cure for mental illness really really like really and let me tell you something I'm not mentally ill and I never was mentally ill. I had unhealed hurt. I had ineffective coping skills and ineffective thinking that created uh, upset and negativity and an unhappiness for me. There's nothing wrong with my brain. And let me tell you something. I had no problem. I mean, it was very challenging to make positive change, but my body and my brain didn't say, no, you can't make it. It was an open door. I said, listen, I want to change my thoughts. Okay, what do you want to think now? I said, well, I want to think positively. Okay, do it. Figure it out. My brain was on board. Trust, trust me. I had, I had no, I didn't create resistance for myself. I wanted to accomplish positive change. And I did. Nothing stopped me. You know, I mean, I had to fight my anger to, to, to be able to get a hold of it and learn how to manage it. You know, I had, I had to face my fear. I had to get over my, my fear. My fear didn't just go away. 
But let me tell you something. It was like, you know, when I said, I'm, you know, get, uh, I'm coming for you, my, fa my fear ran away, you know? So basically, I made all this amazing positive change. And it's with the negative thoughts and the healthy self-esteem that I am awake. That this is the Debbie that I was meant to be. So now I'm awake and I'm like, all right, let me see. What, what, what's the scene here? What's going on in the world? What's going on, you know, uh, in my life? What's going on, you know? Uh, here I, I have a, uh, a process that helps people uh, heal themselves back to their beautiful, authentic self. But I don't have anybody interested. Here I'm saying that I have the cure for mental illness. And I have people telling me, shut up, positivity doesn't work. I have my doctor saying, you can't say that. And I had a therapist saying, good luck making positive change. Go for it. What? Let me tell you something. I, I you know, I'm coming to you because, uh, you know, it's because, because positive change needs to be made in mental therapy needs to be made for people living in mental illness. And people living in mental illness, I mean, forget about it. They're like, get away. I mean, they're like, listen, uh, you know, I mean, I can't, I can't, you know, convince people that if I don't get through to you, you're going to live in your life in your mental illness. I believe it. I'm out. I am out. I am like fully like I'm amongst people. I'm, I'm in a new place. I'm taking care of myself. You know, like, uh, you know, like I'm, I'm a really, uh, you know, I've, I have no, people have no idea that I ever even live with mental illness, you know? Um, and let me tell you something. Uh, I also, I'm telling parents that it can be avoided. Stop, uh, you know, punishing your kids. Stop scaring them. Stop uh, being an ego and, and making, you know, your, and being controlling or being, you know, making your kids go against their, their, you know, uh, the, their own way, you know, like stop forcing your, your kids to go against their, their will, you know, nobody is listening to me at all. And I am sitting on the biggest news ever. Man can be changed. Man can go from negative thoughts to positive thoughts, from unhappiness to happiness and freedom. Oh, I am awake, and what I see is I see everybody asleep. Deep in their pain, in the ego self. And ego is like, you're wrong. Your, your, your uh, you know, theories on parenting is wrong. My theories are based on accomplishing uh, positive thinking and healthy self-esteem, so you don't know anything about it. And let me tell you something, kids need to accomplish positive thoughts and healthy self-esteem to keep them off the path of mental illness. Mental illness doesn't exist in positive thoughts and healthy self-esteem. I believe it, you know. And let me tell you something, you know, like mental illness, you know, there is too high of an incidence uh, of abuse in the mentally ill. So why don't we take out abuse and then see what happens? And that's what I'm saying. And to take out abuse requires healing on the parents' part. You know? So I see... Let me tell you something. I see people ignoring me when I post about the importance of addressing... Of stopping suicide in this country. We have to stop it. I see people ignoring me when I say, Hey, people living in mental illness can live free of mental illness. I see people ignoring me when I say, don't hit your kids. Don't invalidate your kids. Kids need freedom, you know, within boundaries. Parents do whatever the hell they want. And let me tell you something, kids suffer because of it and they suffer for life. So I'm, I am awake, man, and I see, I see people don't give a shit about, you know, uh, you know, positive thoughts, uh, people living in mental illness, not even people living in mental illness are, uh, you know, like, hey, I want to be free. I want to have my happiness in this lifetime. 
you know, um, and people putting their kids on the path to, to mental illness. That's what I see. But I also see that that's not their rational, uh, you know, um, uh, self that serves their highest good. Everybody's in the ego self and they're saying, take your, you know, your positive thoughts and go, go fuck yourself. You know, I have the cure to mental illness. I have the means to accomplish positive thinking and healthy self-esteem. That's our authentic self. There's nothing wrong with it. And I post about it and I, all the time and I have no takers, but mental illness is rising in our youth. That's my motivation to keep going. We don't want to live in a world where everybody's mentally ill. You know, it was one in five. Now I see it's one in four. What? And let me tell you something. Everybody has negative thoughts, low self-esteem, and negative and effective coping skills, whether they have a diagnosis or not. So, uh, and they have negative thoughts, not positive thoughts. So I think we already are living in a mentally ill world, and it's called the ego self. Some people have more hurt than others. Some people have been more abused than others. Mistreated. There's your mental illness. There's nothing wrong with them. We got to stop, you know, filing, uh, you know, people who have been abused under mental illness. And mental ill and mental therapy has done a disservice to, to, to this, you know, uh, society by diagnosing people mentally ill when they have circumstances that support their behavior even and they have behavior problems so what they're they're allowed to have behavior problems they have difficult parents they can't even express themselves we gotta stop you know having kids get in trouble for everything that they do they're fucking learning you don't learn by negative consequences you hurt with negative consequences so, you know, I, I see all this. I see a need, you know, to address it. And I'm by myself. Nobody is interested in uh, freedom and happiness for the beautiful, authentic self. Everyone's living in ego, in their hurt and their pain and their negative thoughts. And you know what? Let me tell you something. I'm in a position where I got to I gotta go to bat for everyone. I got to go to bat. I do. I got to be, be the voice and be the person to make positive change or everyone's going to be stuck in their negative thoughts and low self-esteem for life when the entire time they could be living in their positivity, freedom, and happiness. So I, you know, I got, I'm writing a book and, um, you know, my goal is to wake other people up. The more, more people that are up, the better it's going to be for people living in mental illness. There is, a, there is a cure in the collective consciousness. There is positive change in the collective consciousness. But you know what? I'm, not, I'm really not supported by the universe. The universe, psh, man, is really throwing rocks at the beautiful, authentic self. It's really throwing rocks at Debbie Jacobs. You know, I'm in a little room instead of out there making positive change in the world because I can't get through to make positive change. Nobody is, uh, you know... They're all negative thinkers. Where are the positive thinkers? I don't know. So it's my like, you know, if I want you to live in your in your uh, happiness and your freedom and your positive thoughts and healthy self-esteem, then I got to, you know, accomplish it. And I do want you to live in your positive thoughts and healthy self-esteem. So I'm going to do everything that I can to make positive change, to bring reform to mental therapy, reform to parenting and happiness to people living uh, in their pain. So, all right, my name is Debbie Jacobs. Uh, thanks for joining, and I'll see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.